good morning everyone uh, in uh, last today's class we have seen that uh, how to use how to use the similarity transformation in order to reduce the partial differential equations that will be a governing equation of solute balance over the mass transfer boundary layer into an ordinary differential equation we also looked into the solution of the ordinary differential equations and then we looked into the algorithm of how to implement that uh, you know uh, governing the solution of the governing equation in order to calculate the permeate flux and permeate concentration in fact what we have done we uh, wrote an algorithm by which you can obtain uh, uh, by, by, by using an iterative method to you can obtain the uh, the profile of permeate concentration and permeate flux along the membrane length once you get the profile as a function of x the flux and the permeate concentration then you can do an in numerical integration by using uh, you know, simpson's one third rule or something like that or trapezoidal rule and one can get the length averaged permeate flux and permeate concentration then what we argued that still this method is a bit more complicated we kept on arguing that uh, we, sh we should seek something a simpler method but which will be accurate simpler but it will be accurate which will give the full feature of whatever we are trying to achieve so what we did we uh, we, we then we have, the, we have seen that there will be we can we can recast the whole solution into two coupled nonlinear non algebraic equations okay if you now solve these two algebraic equations again by an iterative technique then you can get the length averaged permeate flux and length averaged permeate concentration directly okay so we are try we are basically going to do that in order to do that the first thing that you have to do you have to get an expression of length average share root number or length average mass transfer coefficient so we are we are doing the derivation of expression of length averaged share root number or mass transfer coefficient or the non dimensional version of mass transfer co coefficient is share root number okay so first thing we wrote yesterday to, we wrote down the definition of mass transfer coefficient it will be minus del c del y evaluated at y equal to 0 divided by c at y equal to 0 that is nothing but membrane surface concentration c at y equal to 0 minus c at the bulk the c at y equal to 0 is nothing but cm so therefore uh, you, you can write down k cm star minus 1 is equal to minus d u naught h x d raised to the power 1 upon 3 d c star d eta at eta equal to 0. How did you get this expression? What we did now we, we express del c del y the derivative in terms of d c d eta. So, we expressed this derivative with respect to y. Uh, uh, in terms of in the uh, similarity parameter eta once you do that all these things will appear okay so i told you to take it as a home assignment and get this derivation and c at y is equal to 0 is nothing but cm and what we did we just multiply divide both expression by c naught so that we can express the con uh, concentration as a non dimensional quantity so cm star is nothing but cm by c naught and c star is nothing but c by c naught so once you do that and if you substitute the expression of cm star what is cm star cm star is nothing but the constant k2 if you remember and uh, del c this is star d d eta you know it, it is related to the constant function of the integration constant k1 so therefore one can write down k is nothing but k1 divided by k2 minus 1 u0 d square hx raised to the power 1 upon 3. So, I just omitted couple of number of steps, couple of steps here. So, you just ex get the expression of this is d eta at eta equal to 0 that we have derived in the last class. In yesterday's class, we have derived the expression of this is d eta at eta equal to 0 and that will be function of the, the in constant of integration k1 and cm star is nothing but the constant of integration k2. So, once you substitute that you will be getting this expression. Now, if you look into the expression of k1 and k2 that we have derived in the last class this is nothing but minus a1 rr divided by 1 minus a1 rr i okay? and k2, k2 is nothing but your 
C m star and this will be 1 minus 1 divided by 1 minus a 1 r r the integration i. The integration i is basically a definite integral that will be in the form of exponential minus eta cube by 3 uh, minus a eta d eta. Okay. So, we will be in a position now if you if you if you simplify this expression if you if you substitute k the value expression of k 1 and k 2 into the definition of mass transfer coefficient k 1 minus k 1 divided by k 2 minus 1 will turn out to be 1 over i. Okay. Just substitute that you will, you will find it. Okay. Substitute the expression of k 1 this expression of k 1 here substitute the expression of k 2 here and simplify it. So, what you get is that you will be getting k as minus as 1 over i 1 u 0 d square divided by h x raised to the power 1 upon 3. So, once you get the expression of k and this expression will give this i 1 is basically and def a definite integral. So, it will be returning your value. Okay. u 0 is constant, d is constant, h is constant. So, k is inversely proportional to x to the power 1 upon 3. Once you get the expression of k, you can get the expression of Sherwood number as a function of x star. Okay. What is what is Sherwood number? So, Sherwood number is nothing but k d by d. Okay. So, this will be 1 over i 1 d by d u 0 d square divided by h x raised to the power 1 upon 3. Now, uh, we, we write the half height in terms of equivalent diameter h is equal to d by 4 and, uh, and, and express x star as x by l. Okay. Then we can easily find out and we substitute all this here in the expression and you will be getting the expression of Sherwood number as a function of x star as 4 to the power 1 upon 3 divided by i the whole thing within the bracket becomes Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 x star raised to the power minus 1 upon 3. In fact, in the last class we have derived that the whole thing that is within the bracket uh, with, a, with a power 1 by 3 will turn out to be Reynolds Smith d by l. So, those students who have not uh, attended in the last class please go through the lecture notes of the last class otherwise you will be lost. Okay. So, now, you are in a position once you do the get the uh, get the expression of Sherwood number as a function of x star, you will be in a position to get the length average Sherwood number. What is it? 0 to integration 0 to 1 s h x star d x star. Okay. So, once you carry out this integration, the whole integration turns out to be 2.381 divided by i Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3. Now, this is a very crucial and important relationship. From this important relationship, we can get various interpretation about the uh, mass transfer coefficient of Sherwood number in a channel where the channel walls are porous, unlike the channel walls are impervious in case of heat and mass transfer analogy. Okay. Now, let us see how we can do it. Now, Depending on the value of i or the physical situation, there are several simple simplified cases that will arise. Case number one is no porous wall. That means, we are talking about a flow through an impervious conduit. That means, the membrane is not present, the wall is impervious. In that case, there is no question of permeate flux. If there is no question of permeate flux, the uh, Peclet wall, which is nothing but non-dimensional permeate flux J d by d, that is J is equal to 0, that means P w equal to 0. So, in that case, what happens? You can evaluate the integral i and the fate of integral i becomes this exponential minus eta cube by 3 d eta. What is this? This is uh, this you can evaluate numerically and this integration integral integral turns out to be 1.288. You can use a trapezoidal rule and fit this expression and evaluate the integral, put the infinite value as the upper limit of the integration may be 10 or 12 and you can find out that this integra integration results a value 1.288. If you, if you substitute this in the expression of length of a Sherwood number, what it, what it will give you, you will be getting 1.85 Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3. 
Now, if you remember, we have talked about this uh, relationship of Sherwood number of mass transfer coefficient earlier when we were talking about the Sherwood, uh, the Sherwood, the mass transfer in a in a wall which will be obtained from the heat and mass transfer analogy for the heat transfer in a non-porous conduit. Okay, this is known as Levex relation. Okay, this is the Levex relation. It was in fact derived in the year 1888, almost 120 years back. Now, this expression. So that's why I told you when we talked about the Sherwood number relations under the laminar flow conditions, they are they are exactly the relations. They are not correlations. They can be obtained from the fundamental theory, like whatever we have derived uh, right uh, right away. But on the other hand, the dittes volter relationship for the turbulent flow that is 0 0.0 to 3 Reynolds raised to a 0.8 Smith raised to a 0.3, that is a correlation. It is generated from the experimental data conducted and fitting the data into that particular form. On the other hand, Levex relation, the, the Nussel number and the Sherwood number relations for the uh, flow through a tube or for the flow through a pipe or rectangular conduit, they are, they are the relations, they are not correlations. So, this is Levex relation and now let us look into the expression of I, case number 2. Who the, this case is of particular interest to us. In this case, my PW is not equal to 0. There is a wall suction that is present in the system. That means, you are talking about a porous conduit, a conduit which will be having porous wall. Okay? Now, for, for the case of you know, uh, reverse osmosis to reverse osmosis to ultrafiltration, the reverse osmosis flux will be extremely small. It is almost non-porous conduit. Okay? So, J will be pretty small. On the other hand, the ultrafiltration flux will be higher and microfiltration flux will be highest. So, the effect of porosity on the wall will be much, much prominent when you move from the operation from the reverse osmosis to microfiltration. So, in the case of ultrafiltration and microfiltration, this effect of porosity will be of primary interest. And if you plot the value of, uh, you know, uh, we, we have seen, we have, we have looked into quantity, we have defined a quantity lambda, the suction parameter yesterday, if you remember, that is nothing but P w bar divided by Reynolds Smith d by L raised to the power 1 upon 3. Okay? For a typical case, this, this quantity Reynolds Smith d by L will be ranging in the order of 10 to the power 3 to 10 to the power 5 under the laminar flow conditions and the value of PEW that you will be getting in case of microfiltration that will be in the order of 10 to the power minus 5 meter cube per meter square second. In case of ultrafiltration, it will be 2 or 3 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter cube per meter square second. So, you know what is the order of magnitude or range of values of this uh, 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 PEW, uh, the, the, the permeate flux in the case of reverse osmosis and in the case of microfiltration. We know the typical value of Reynolds Smith d by L under the laminar flow conditions. Under these cases, for reverse osmosis to ultrafiltration, this lambda maximum it varies for 15. Okay. So, it varies from 0 to 15. Wh which case will correspond to 0? The case 0 means P w equal to 0, that means there is no wall suction. So, we get back this relationship, non-porous conduit. For the case lambda equal to 0, we get back the non-porous conduit. For, the, for, for any other value of lambda which is not equal to 0 corresponds to the porous wall. Right? Now, if you remember the expression of i, i becomes 0 to infinity exponential minus eta cube by 3 minus uh, lambda, right? lambda eta data, right? This lambda is nothing but P w by Reynolds Smith d by L raised to the power 1 upon 3. So, we know that typically the lambda varies from 0 to 15. Now, what we can do? We can take different values of lambda. This will from, this is for reverse osmosis and this is for microfiltration. Okay. So, we, we can take different values of lambda between 0 and 15 and calculate this integral. This is a definite integral, this is absolutely no problem. And if you can plot 1 over i versus lambda, it will show a plot something like this. 
okay, and these 15. Okay. So, this curve can be obtained by numerical integration of, la, uh, of the integral, definite integral i by putting various values of lambda. Now, what we can do? We can fit a polynomial of uh, in terms of lambda. Okay. So, if you do that and substitute in a governing equation, the Sherwood number expression becomes 1.85 Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3, 1 plus 0 0.32 lambda plus 0 0.02 lambda square minus 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 lambda cube. Okay. So, this lambda is nothing but P w divided by Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3. If lambda equal to 0, now, so, so it, it basically this expression is generated, for, generated from the fundamentals. Okay. We, are, we are expressing, we are doing numerical integration of uh, this integral i for the various values of lambda and after doing a numerical integration, we are fitting a curve a polynomial in terms of lambda, okay, third order polynomial and substitute in the governing equation. Now, if you see that if the, the wall is not porous, it, if it is impervious, then lambda equal to 0, if lambda is equal to 0, put this expression, you get back your Lebesgue relationship. If lambda is not equal to 0, you will be getting this expression and that is the correction to the Lebesgue relation for the non-porous conduit and this is derived in 1997 and that is the first work of my PhD thesis. Okay. So, uh, if, you, if you look into the uh, Journal of Membrane Science, volume number 109 and 1997, give a search, I forgot the page number, you will get this article. Okay. So, we have solved this problem for the rectangular conduit, for the tubular flow, uh, for the radial channel flow. Okay. So, similar analysis can be carried out for the tubular flow. If the conduit is tube, that means the flow is occurring through a tube and the wall is porous. Okay. So, the membrane is basically kept in the wall and the Sherwood number relationship can be obtained in the same fashion. You can look into that paper and see the deriv derivation in detail and the Sherwood number, the length of a Sherwood number becomes 1.62 Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.37 lambda plus 0 0.03 lambda square minus 10 to the power minus 4 lambda cube. Okay. So, if lambda is equal to 0 for the non-porous conduit, you get back the Lebesgue solution for the flow through a tube that is 1.62 Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 and d is basically the inner diameter of the tube. Now, let us look into the calculation method, how it uh, you know increases the speed of the calculation, how it simplifies our calculation, what we are aiming for. Okay. Let us say, faster method, faster procedure to calculate or to predict system performance. Okay. Now, we are talking about again the same rectangular geometry, flow through a rectangular conduit. If you remember, the boundary condition the that is on the, uh, the that is the condition the boundary condition that is that is the interface between the between porous membrane and flow outside is j times cm minus cp is equal to minus d del c del y at y equal to 0. Now, this relationship is valid for every x location in the channel. That means, if you if you talk about a control volume between x and x plus delta x, this relationship will hold good. That means, it will be valid for every x location. Now, instead of delta x, now if we consider this delta x is basically the full length of the membrane module. Okay. In that case, all these quantities will be replaced by the length averaged quantities. Right. So, we can talk about a length average quantities C m bar minus C p bar is equal to minus d del c del y y equal to 0. This, the, the whole derivative will be a bar 
the length averaged bar and if you look into the definition of mass transfer coefficient this will be nothing but k l bar c m minus c p c m minus c naught right the the we have we have just in the beginning of the of, of this class we have written the definition of mass transfer coefficient k l is equal to minus d del c del y at y equal to 0 divided by c m minus c naught ok. So, now you take these two relationship and see what you get you will be getting j is equal to k l bar c m minus c naught divided by c m r r ok all these are length averaged quantities c naught bar is there is no meaning of c naught bar because we know the fit concentration. So, that is be c naught. Now, may we make it non dimensional that means, we multiply both side by d equivalent divided by diffusivity of the solute. So, let us see what you get j d by d is equal to k l bar d e by d make it non dimensional. So, this becomes c m star minus 1 divided by c m star r r right. So, this becomes nothing but the length of rest permeate flux non dimensional p w and this will be nothing but length average shroud number and this will be uh, divided by r r 1 minus 1 by c m star ok. So, you will be getting the expression of permeate flux in terms of length average shroud number and we know the expression of shroud number in terms of p w what is that if you write that you will be getting this as uh, 1 over 1 minus 1 over r r 1 minus 1 by c m star and what is shroud number length average this this, is, this will be 1.85 Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.02 lambda right that was the expression I guess. Uh, 0 0.32 lambda 0 0.32 lambda plus 0 0.02 lambda square minus 8 into 10 to the power minus 4 lambda cube. Lambda being a number which will be nothing but P w bar divided by Reynolds Smith d by L raised to the power 1 upon 3. So, this will be giving you an expression of a relationship a, a, an algebraic relationship between C m star and P w. Okay, where there are two unknowns P w and C m star and you have the Darcy's law that is valid throughout the whole module that means, P w is equal to B 1 times 1 minus delta pi by delta p. Okay. This is equation number 1, this is equation number 2. Now, this we have defined in the last class that is the from the Darcy's law if you make it non dimensional you will be getting this expression. So, the, what is this expression delta pi? Delta pi will be function of C m star if you remember. So, so I will get an, an algebraic equation between P w bar and C m star. I will be getting another algebraic equation be, 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 between P w, P w bar and C m star two equations two unknown. Now, they can be solved by using an iterative technique by using some nonlinear algebraic equation solver. So, two equations two unknown what are the two unknowns P w bar and C m star. Okay. These two equations 1 and 2 will be simply solved and one can get an estimate of length averaged permeate flux and, and non dimensional uh, length averaged permeate uh, membrane surface concentration. Once you will be knowing the non dimensional membrane surface concentration you will be in a position to get the permeate concentration as well that is related to C p is nothing but 1 minus real retention times C m bar. So, once you get the length average permeate uh, membrane surface concentration you will be in a position to estimate the length average permeate concentration. So, this is a this is the quickest way to solve the um, uh, you know uh, cross flow system in a rectangular conduit without going into without solving the uh, uh, the profile of the permeate flux and permeate concentration or and first of all without solving any partial differential equations. So, 
we got rid of solution of partial differential equation. In the last class, we have seen how we get the profiles of polymeric flux and polymeric concentration, and from that we uh, land into the length averaged polymeric flux and polymeric concentration. In fact, the length averaged quantities are of interest to you because you cannot measure uh, uh, these quantities at every x location. What you can measure, you can measure a length averaged polymeric flux or polymeric concentration. So, therefore, that is of primary interest to you, and this shortcut method via the Sherut number, length average Sherut number, or mass transfer coefficient that will give you direct estimation of length averaged polymeric flux and polymeric concentration. That is why this is the shortest method to uh, model the system. Okay. So, that goes for the cross flow system in a rectangular conduit. In a tubular module, the same thing will be valid, only difference is the d equivalent in the rectangular thing will be replaced by the inner diameter of the tube number 1. Number 2, the expression of Sherut number will be different in case of the tubular module that will be 1.62 Reynolds made d by L raised to 1 upon 3 into uh, this expression will be this polynomial will be something else that is already written down. So, one can solve the by the same way one can solve the uh, yes, get the system predict the system performance in case of tubular flow without having any adjustable parameter you can predict it from the fundamentals okay uh, next important thing that we'll be doing uh, probably after a couple of classes i'll be solving some of the problems in the class itself so that things will be very clear how to use these theories to re to uh, have an actual prediction in a in, in a real problem okay real system the next thing that I will be teaching you that is the unstirred batch system. What is unstirred batch system? Unstirred batch system is basically it is a small setup, it can be large setup as well. Uh, it, there, there are two flanges, two flanges, there will be in fact three flanges, there is a top flange there is a cylindrical volume and there will be a bottom flange. Okay. The top flange is basically this top and bottom flange will be connected to the body, it is a circular body and in the, the in the bottom flange it will be it will be there will be concentric grooves on it we put the uh, a, a solid surface a solid substrate that is very porous let us say porous stainless steel support. Over that we put the membrane, we cut a membrane piece from a rectangular sheet into a circular shape and put it over there and then the solution is fed here. Now, uh, the whole thing is closed and this solution is pressurized by a nitrogen cylinder. Okay. Now, you under the nitrogen cylinder pressure, the filtration will, 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 uh, will be carried out and you will be getting the permeate flux and you are not using any stirring in the system. So, when this unstirred batch system, why this unstirred batch system is so important that we will be studying it. The application of unstirred batch system is twofold. First one is that to validate the concept. What is the validation of the concept? Suppose you would like to uh, treat some effluent or some fruit juice or some kind of liquid stream. Now, which membrane you have to select? Suppose the, suppose the membrane you will be having a wide varieties of membrane. If you talk about the ultra filtration membrane, you will be having probably 10 15 molecular cutoffs. Which membrane you have to select? That is a very crucial aspect. Before doing any, before conducting any experiment, you have to identify which membrane is suitable for your particular purpose. Okay. So, what we can do since it is a small apparatus and there is there is no need of any power power and you just uh, fill charge the uh, you know uh, cylinder charge the feed tank the charge the this uh, this volume with the feed solution and pressurize it and leave it okay so what you will be getting you will be getting the permeate flux so you just get the when you get the permeate you just analyze the permeate quality okay if you see the permeate quality is up to the mark and it is acceptable that membrane will be good enough for a higher scale up or higher module. Now, number one, number two is that if a concept is validated that you will be using 10,000 molecular cutoff that will suffice to uh, you know validate your system to bring down the concentration below a particular level, that will be the best because this is a worst performer. Unstirred batch system is the worst performer. 
why it is a worst performer compared to the cross flow system? Why it is a worst performer? Because you are not using any stirring, you are not using any turbulence. If you increase the turbulence in an actual system, for example, the cross flow system, the, the system that we have just studied now or a cross flow system in a rectangular channel or in a spiral wound module or in a tubular module, the cross flow system will always perform better than the unstirred batch system. Because in the unstirred batch system, there is no turbulence and the solutes will be deposited over the membrane surface, the effect of concentration polarization will be maximum there. Since the polarization will be maximum, the permeate quality will tend to deteriorate the maximum level. Even in that cell, if it satisfies you, the, the environmental regulation or rule, that means in a cross flow system or in actual system where the turbulence is more, then it will be a sure shot success there as well. Okay. So, that is why unstirred batch systems are quite crucial and uh, that give you that gives you the experiments conducted in such systems will give you a first hand information or confirmative measure that you what you are doing that is a right thing that is a right step. Okay. This is a number one. So, it is a worst performer. So, if performance is satisfactory here. in this setup, in an actual setup, it will surely succeed. The process will work. Okay. And second thing is, second advantage of using the unstirred batch system is that Sometimes when you are talking about an industrial effluent, you are not very sure about the physical quantities. And if you remember, if you, if you just uh, 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 whatever we have done, the modeling we have done, the modeling we have done, if you know the, the physical properties of the solutes perfectly, if you know the diffusivity, if you know the density, if you know the viscosity, all these things, if you know the osmotic pressure relationship, how it varies with the concentration, all the calculations can be done. But in an actual industrial effluent, it is very difficult to estimate the osmotic pressure, it is very difficult to estimate the diffusivity of the system because it will be containing 10,000 elements. Instead of one species, there will be thousands of species present in that system. So, it will be very difficult, you, you do not know how, what are the, first of all, you, it is very difficult to identify what are the species present. Number one, number two is even if you identify the species present, what are the major species and it is be very difficult to get the value of diffusivity for each and every species and it will be very difficult to get the value, value of osmotic pressure expression as a function of concentration with respect to each and every species. So, is, so, so basically you should know what will be the effective osmotic pressure, you should know what is the effective diffusivity. Right? So, for that if you look into the effective osmotic pressure, if you look into the expression of osmotic pressure, it is a third order polynomial in concentration. That means, there are three constants involved in it because you do not know the molecular weight as well, you, if you do not know the first constant even, because you do not know the molecular weight, first constant is the Vantov's constant R T by M, or you know T is the temperature in absolute scale, M is the molecular weight. You do not know the molecular weight because it is very difficult to estimate the species itself. So, there are three unknown constants involved in the expression of osmotic pressure. And one more constant is an unknown constant that, 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 is, that is you know difficult to estimate that is the effective diffusivity. Okay. So, at least these four constants one uh, are really unknown. The viscosity density one can measure, okay. viscosity density one can measure and can put in a program or in your calculations. So, four constants have to be determined. So, again you have to go for an optimization. For the optimization if for determination of four constants using a theory you must be requiring the a, a, a huge experimental data bank. That bank must be consisting about 20 or more than 20 experimental points. Then you can you will be probably thinking of to estimate four constants by doing an optimization you know uh, subroutine. Now, getting 20 experiments means in a, in a cross flow cell the or the steady state experiment that we have talked about. Uh, that, may, that means, one set of experiments will give you one set of data, okay. one permeate flux and one permeate qual quality. But, so you have to conduct huge number of experiments, 
for at least 25 or 27 experiments, uh, 27 is 3 into 3, that means feed concentration, operating pressure and cross flow velocity. If you vary all these 3 operating parameters 3, three times, then you will be getting 3, three to the power 3, 27 experiments. So, minimum 27 experiments need to be conducted to estimate these 4 unknown constants, maximum uh, 36 or more. Okay. Now, conduction of this many experiments will take huge amount of time, huge amount of manpower, huge amount of cost. But if you conduct one unstirred batch experiment, in one experiment you can generate more than 27 data. How will you do that? Now, in an, in a, in an unstirred, unstirred batch cell, what it generally, what, what happens is that over the membrane, the solutes will be getting deposited and it is the whole system is left to its natural tendency. Okay, you are not controlling it. Okay, you are not putting any star. You are not. You are not inducing any turbulence in your system. So it will be left to itself. So uh, solutes will be depositing over the membrane surface. So you will be getting a an in a development of concentration boundary layer, and this concentration of boundary layer will be now a function of time. Okay this delta becomes a function of time. Now, if delta becomes function of time, then uh, you, what you can do, uh, you will be getting a permeate flux which will be a function of time, right? and you will be getting a membrane surface concentration which will be a function of time. So, therefore, if you have a measurement, the permeate flux versus time will be having a trend something like this. So, you can have various experimental points. On these curves. Now, you can conduct these experiments, let us say for 2 hours, you can conduct these experiments, let us say for 5 hours. Every 10 minutes, you can take a measurements, or every 5 minutes, or every 15 minutes, it is up to you. You can take a measurements. So, you can get the permeate flux and permeate concentration data. This is CP as a function of time. So, you can collect as many data as possible. Now, every time measurements, every time point, these measurements will be J experimental and CP experimental. The ith point will, will be corresponding to J EXPI and CP EXPI. So, you can have huge number of this data. On the other hand, if you would like to have a steady state cross flow system, one experiment of uh, let us say duration of 2 hours will or, or 1 hour will be giving you one data. Okay. So, you have to conduct so many experiments. On the other hand, if you do an unstirred batch cell, you can generate so many data uh, from, from, from let us say 2 hours or 3 hours by conducting one single experiment. Then you can fit this data in your optimization subroutine, let us say 25 data or 27 data and can estimate the 4 unknown constants. Okay. That is why the study of unstirred batch cell is very important. Okay. Okay. So, let us write down the, so, so again the, the problem the mo, for the modeling the problem remains same, we have to solve the fluid flow plus mass transfer in concentration boundary layer that will be function of time and y. So, it grows in the y direction, so it is a function of time and y and it has to be coupled with transport through the porous membrane. Okay. In the earlier case, it was a function of, it was a steady state process, it was a function of x and y and in this case, it is a function of t and y. So, if you write down the governing equation of solute mass balance in concentration boundary layer, it will be nothing but del C del T plus V del C del Y is equal to D del square C del Y square. This is the governing equation of concentration uh, solute mass balance within the concentration boundary layer. And since there is no other 
know flow in the um, x direction or whatever. So, V will be nothing but minus j. What is j? j is the permeate flux at y equal to 0. Okay. So, the governing equation now becomes del c del t minus j del c del y is equal to d del square c del y square. This equation has to be solved along with its initial and boundary conditions in order to get c the concentration within the mass transfer boundary layer as a function of y and t. Then that has to be evaluated at y is equal to 0 that is at the membrane surface and that has to be hooked up with the transport law through the porous membrane or the Darcy's law. It will be giving you a prediction of the permeate flux how it varies with time. Okay. So, that is the idea. So, in order to solve the concentration at y is equal to 0 or C m at the membrane surface, you have to solve this equation within the mass transfer boundary layer. Now, in order to solve this equation, you require to have one initial condition with respect to t and two boundary conditions with respect to y. So, let us write down the conditions. At t is equal to 0, C is equal to C naught because it was uh, same concentration everywhere. At y is equal to delta, C is equal to C naught. At y is equal to 0, you will be having the uh, convective diffusive uh, the um, uh, convective diffusive boundary condition, mixed boundary condition present J C m minus C p plus D del C del y is equal to 0 as earlier. So, this becomes J C m R R plus d del c del y is equal to 0, this is equivalent. Now again the mass transfer boundary layer will be extremely thin, it will be in the order of micron, whereas the actual uh, you know, dimension of the, uh, of the system will be probably 3 or 4 times higher in order of magnitude. So, we can replace this, uh, 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 replace this boundary condition by y is equal to infinity. Okay. So, we can do a modification here for the ease of mathematical treatment, we can replace this boundary condition y equal to infinity c is equal to c naught. Again as we have discussed earlier, the governing equation is a parabolic partial differential equation and one boundary condition is at infinity. That means, it can have a similarity solution and this case it will be having indeed a similarity solution and this partial differential can be reduced to an ordinary differential equation. Okay. But before that we have to identify what is the similarity parameter and what is the uh, functional variation of the similarity parameter with respect to the independent variable y and t. But before that we should uh, make this equation non-dimensional and uh, that, will, that will make our life simple. Uh, we, we write c star is equal to c by c naught, write y star is equal to y by r, where r is the radius, inner radius of the cell, of the ultrafiltration cell. It is a cylindrical cell, so it is the inner radius of that cell. And just put it there, so it becomes r square and, and r square by d del c star del t minus P E W del C star del Y is equal to del square C star del Y star square. What is P E W? It is the non-dimensional flux that is J R by solute diffusivity. The, the, the physical the, the um, uh, dimension becomes R here instead of D equivalent okay, in the earlier case. So, it is J R times uh, D divided by d. So, what it does? So, in the, the and sister is c by c naught. So, right hand side is completely non-dimensional. The second term on the left hand side is non-dimensional. The first term of the left hand side has to be a non-dimensional quantity. That means, T d by r square must be having a non-dimensional, it must be defined as non-dimensional time tau. It will be having a unit of time if you replace the unit of T diffusivity and R square, it will be giving a, it is it is a unit free number. Okay. So, del C star, in fact that is how one has to find out what is the non-dimensional form of any independent quantity. If you do not know, if it is not apparent that what is the form of non-dimensional time or something, some independent parameter, if you know the others, so just substitute there 
and do a simplification and make other terms non dimensional. So, the that the, the, the term the third term which what will be the non dimensional version that will appear automatically. Okay. So, del C star del tau minus P w del C star del y star is equal to del square C star del y star square. Okay. So, this is the governing equation and the initial conditions non dimensional initial conditions are at initial and boundary conditions at tau equal to 0, C star is equal to 1, at y star is equal to 0, del C star del y star plus P w C m star R r equal to 0 and at y star is equal to infinity C star is equal to 1. So, that is the complete problem statement of this unstarred batch cell. So, this is the governing equation, these three are the various initial and boundary conditions. We will be having two boundary conditions in Y and one initial condition in X, in, in tau, in time. Now, you are in a position to, we, we, should, we should find out what will be the similarity parameter in this case and we do the same type of analysis as earlier. That means, the governing equation must be valid at the edge of boundary layer. At the edge of boundary layer, del C del Y will be equal to 0 because we, we utilize this property because the governing equation is valid within the control volume as well as on the boundary. On in, in contrast, the boundary conditions are valid only on the boundary, but not within the volume of the system. So, we evaluate this boundary, this governing equation at the edge of the boundary layer. So, what you will be getting is del C star del tau will be roughly del square C star del y star square okay, at the edge of boundary layer. Now, do an order of magnitude analysis as earlier. Del sister is written by delta sister and this delta change in delta sister occurs within the time tau from the beginning. So, delta tau, delta tau will be nothing but t tau minus 0. So, this becomes tau right and that will delta square sister is again some kind of delta sister change in uh, concentration and delta y star square will be will be delta star delta star minus 0 square minus 0 square ok. So, that is the right. So, the you will be basically this delta sister delta sister will be cancelled and delta tau will be replaced by tau and it will be landing up with delta star square will be equal to tau ok delta star will be nothing but root over tau. Okay. So, now if you define the similarity parameter, the similarity parameter is defined as y by delta that means y star by delta star okay, divided by radius on numerator as well as denominator. So, this becomes uh, y star by root over tau. Okay. So, this is the form of similarity parameter in this particular case. So, the independent variables y and tau will be related as y star into tau to the power minus half. That particular combination is the similarity parameter in this case. It is exactly like the similar earlier one what, where it was, it I was equal to y star divided by x star to the power 1 upon 3. In this case, it is y star divided by tau to the power half. Okay. Now, using this similarity parameter, now we, what we can do? We can put the derivatives of the governing equation in, in terms of similarity parameter, only one parameter. So, therefore, you can reduce, so we reduce the, because now there are the two independent parameters no longer exist, only one parameter will, will be sufficient, that is the similarity parameter of the combined parameter. So, the whole governing equation can be written in the form of combined parameter and now it becomes an ordinary differential equation which can be solved as we have solved earlier in the case of cross flow system and we will look into the solution in detail in the next class. Okay. Thank you.